Have you ever thought to yourself, what am I going to do with all this spare filament? You know, I'm talking when you finish printing something and you have not enough filament for another project at all, but just enough to make small stuff, but you don't know if it's enough to make medium sized or big stuff. And so out of precaution and prudence, you take the filament spool out and you put a whole new spool in. And then now you have a few meters of whatever filament you had left. And I've always wondered, is there a way to put this to good use? Growing up, I always had to be really frugal and of making use of everything I came across. So I thought, huh, I wonder if there's a way to splice together filament, kind of like fiber optic cables. So I went to Amazon and found this tool called a uh, filament splicer from Vitsport. To use a filament splicer, there is a technique that you have to follow. And that procedure involves a lot of hurry up and wait. To use the splicer, what you'd have to do first is to heat your splicing tool for about a minute by turning the switch on. And you let it heat up. And while you're letting it heat up, you want to take the two ends of the filament spools you want to splice together and cut them flush with the included flush cutters. Next, you turn off the splicer tool and you place one filament on top of the heating element inside the splicer and you close the splicer and push in the other filament. Next, you squeeze both ends together towards the inside of the splicer and then you let it cool for about four to five minutes. How this works is that the splicer creates this heated chamber of sorts, almost akin to injection molding. You push both ends of the plastic filament together and after you let it cool, you end up with a splice or joined strand. And this strand has a bit of flashing inside it, of course, due to the nature of the clamp. When you squeeze the filament in, it's molten, and the excess material spreads outwards onto the clamp material. This is easy to fix, and it's probably why they give you so much sanding paper. What I do is I take my carving knife, I use a flex cut knife, and I strip off the flashing around it first, and then I take the included sandpaper of 300 grit, and I just start to file it down until it's slick and smooth. This is pretty important that you get this right to the right diameter of sorts rather than acceptable margins. Because if the filament is too thick where you spliced it, it will get jammed in your Bowden tube. This filament splicer tool is quite an oddity. It has a tubing of sorts attached to what looks to be a re repurposed uh, clamp. It has a 3D printed base pad, uh, I guess to stabilize it, uh, screwed onto it from the bottom. And it has some cabling covered up with some other 3D printed parts attached to, and it's all attached to a power switch. And there's one thing I don't like about this thing. It's that you can't tell if it's on or not. And I think that's pretty important for something that, you know, heats up. You'll want to know if it's on or not, so you can turn it off if it is. But this power switch is effectively unlabeled. So what I had to do is I experimented and I figured out which position was on, which was off. And I took some gunplug markers and just marked a red for on and white for off onto the power switch. This was a quick fix. To do and I really wish that this device had like an LED light of sort just to indicate whether it was on or not or at least a clearly labeled switch so what's my take I think this is a pretty handy tool it's a unique tool that would have a very niche use and I like it because it lets me reuse filament that I otherwise would have thrown out it does take a while to get a substantial amount of filament to use with this though. So I think that after at least a few uses of putting together your spools and whatnot, uh, the tool basically pays for itself in the roll of filament. It costs about $50 on Amazon, and a new roll of filament is about 20 bucks. So if you make enough to make at least 
two and a half spools of filament, PLA plus, the tool basically pays for itself. It's pretty nifty, and I I guess it'd be useful for fixing broken um, strands of filament too. Overall, I like the tool. It has some good utility to it. I just wish that it was better thought out in terms of user intuitiveness. Like I mentioned before, there isn't a clear way to see whether it's on or not, and the instructions are somewhat lacking. I think this is a particularly handy tool to have just simply because of its very niche utility in putting together two separate strands of filament and saving you some money down the line. If you want to buy one, go to my website at vinstoolbox.com and you can use my Amazon affiliate links on there to get not only this splicing tool but also some other oddities and knickknacks I keep at my workbench. Everything I have on that site I personally use and there's nothing on there that I don't. You think this video is neat and I appreciate you sticking around for my first review video. I encourage you to check out my Patreon and also my social media as well. It's the same username I have of my YouTube, WinKVBN.